Hi historians, and welcome to another episode of Last Week in Review. This week is very special because I have a special guest, and we're going to talk about the American Revolution, so here we go. And our special guest for today is Mr. Stockburger. Yay! Stock, thanks for coming on the program. You are welcome. You've been on my show three times now, and it's about time I... Return the favor. Well, thank you. I appreciate you being here. Um, today, we are going to go over uh, some big topics um, considering the American Revolutionary War. Okay. And uh, because that's what we're talking about in class. And we have a test coming up, uh, not this week, but the following week. So this will be a good test for review. So you are a part of our review process. How do you feel about that? I feel very inadequate. <laughs> well, we're going to find out how inadequate you really are because we're going to play a little quiz. And I wanted to bring in uh, Mr. Stockberger because he is, uh, obviously, as you just mentioned, the French teacher. And uh, we were talking about uh, a very prominent figure in French history and in American history, Marquis de Lafayette. So do you have any information on Lafayette before we start the quiz that you would like to bestow upon us? He was very pro-American. He loved the Americans. Well, he loved how the Americans were constructing their country, constructing the United States, the way that we incorporated the, oh, help me out here, the legislative, executive, and judicial. Oh, the different branches of government. Yeah, the branches yeah. of the government. Mm -hmm. He liked that, that balance of power, and he tried to take that back to France. All right, so a little bit on Marquis de Lafayette. Here we go, we're going to have a quiz here, and I do not have full disclosure here. I do not have the answers on here. So Neither do I. He, <laughs> so he's kind of on his own here. So here we go. Question number one. What were the first battles of the American Revolution? A, the Battle of Saratoga. B, the Battle of Yorktown. C, the Battles of Lexington and Concord. Or C, or D, excuse me, the Battles of uh, the Battle of Bunker Hill. Well, you and I both went to Ball State. We did. That we York, did. Yorktown is about 10 miles south of Ball State. It is. But I like the name Saratoga. Okay. So I'm going with Saratoga. Saratoga... Is incorrect. Oh. It's not Saratoga. It is not Yorktown. It is not Bunker Hill. It is not Bunker Hill. <laughs> the key was sort of in the question. It says, what were the first battles? Of the, and the only one with the two. Lexington and Concord were the first. Okay, question number two. What was one of the battles that is considered the turning point of the American Revolution? Saratoga. You know what? It is Saratoga. It we're going to get to the chase. It is Saratoga. Well done. It is, it's the Battle of Saratoga. <laughs> Moving on to question number three. Who was the man who, according to legend, rode on his horse yelling, the British are coming? Uh, would that be A, Cornwallis, B, George Washington, C, Paul Revere, or D, Thomas Jefferson? That would be Paul Revere. And that would be correct. Number four, General Cornwallis was a British general. True or false? The suspense is thick. I'll answer that if you can tell me how... <laughs> How big of a model of the Titanic we saw? Uh, I believe that would be um, half the scale. Okay. And if you don't get the joke, I'll, I'll put a link to the video um, of what we're referencing. So. Well, was he a British general? False. <laughs> no, he was. <laughs> he okay. was true. He was. Number five. What was the battle in which the colonists made a surprise attack at Christmas? Ooh. A. The Battle of Yorktown. B. The Battle of Breed's Hill. C. The Battle of Trenton and D, the Battle of Bunker Hill. Students watching should know this. I should know this also, and I think it's Bunker Hill because of that famous painting of Washington crossing the Delaware. No, you're incorrect. It's the Battle of Trenton because he's crossing the Delaware River to go into New Jersey, Trenton, New Jersey. Bunker Hill's in Massachusetts. <laughs> Sorry. Here we go. Question number six. Okay. Men who were ready in a minute's notice were called minute men. True, true or false? True. That is correct. That is true. And that's a key term. I so, got two uh, right. Two right. We're, we got some momentum. Going into question number seven here. Question number seven. What was the battle that was lost by the colonists? The colonists dug a fort on another hill, but the battle was called this. Bunker Hill. That's correct! The Battle of Bunker Hill, which is some historians and maybe you watching at home know that the Battle of Bunker Hill was not actually fought on Bunker Hill, it was fought on Breed's Hill. But um, nevertheless, it is called the Battle of Bunker Hill. You are correct, so that's two in a row. We're rolling. Question number eight. What was the last major battle of the American Revolution? A, Bunker Hill, B, Concord, C, Trenton, or D, Yorktown? Yorktown. 
That is correct. Oh, Detroit right. Town, yes. three in a row. Number nine. What song did the colonies adopt as a song to sing while marching? What's love got to do with it? Eh, oh, no. But if that was around, I'm quite positive that would be their marching song. Uh, is it A, Yankee Doodle? B, the Star Spangled Banner? C, your grand old flag? Or D, I'm proud to be an American? <laughs> I think that it is Yankee Doodle. You are correct! It is Yankee Doodle. Well done. Because Star Spangled Banner should not have existed just yet, oh, which means correct. that your grand old flag didn't exist yet. Also correct! Look at that. That's called logic, kids. Use it. <laughs> logic. He's a French teacher, after all. Oui. <laughs> Last question. Number 10. What was the peace treaty that ended the war? Was it A, the Treaty of Paris, 1763 version? B, the Treaty of London, 1783? C, the Treaty of Versailles, or D, the Treaty of Paris, 1783 version? I know that the Treaty of Versailles ended World War I. Correct. Mm -hmm. Since there are two treaties of Paris, it probably comes down to which year. 1776 was the Declaration of Independence. Is that right? It is. So the peace treaty that ended the war, would that be 83, Paris 83? The answer is Paris 83! Yes. Logic prevails! Logic prevails! Fantastic. I will award him five shillings. Five shillings. No, even though they're not edible. And also non transferable because they're fake. We will we'll kind of wrap things up here on Last Week in Review, but I'm going to end with some parting words from the Declaration of Independence our primary source for, from a couple weeks ago. There's a radio news organization called NPR. They're kind of like PBS on the radio. Mm -hmm. radio. Every July 4th, all of their journalists get together and each one reads a line or two from the Declaration of Independence so that they read the whole thing. Fantastic. Well, cue the primary source filter. Words of Thomas Jefferson. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator, with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Stock, thanks for joining us today, you and are um, we will uh, we'll see you guys next time. Do I get a Jolly Rancher? You do get a Jolly Rancher. All right, all right, there we go. <laughs>